All right, we start here. Iran has launched dozens of missiles and drones against Israel and successfully hit the targets. Well, this was in response to a recent Israeli attack against uh, the Iranian embassy in Syria and uh, to punish Israel. SABC News correspondent Alex Cardier joins me live now from Tel Aviv. He's covering the story now. Alex, a very good morning to you. Thanks indeed for your time. So what's the latest on the ground with missiles and drones launched Talk to us about the damage and what do we know about the deaths that have occurred? Well, it was certainly the first ever direct strike from Iran on Israeli territory. Around 300 drones, uh, cruise missiles and ballistic missiles targeting locations across Israel, including uh, populated civilian areas as well. Now, we understand from uh, the Israeli Defense Forces that 99 percent of those drones and missiles were intercepted in the air. To give you a, a more detailed figure, 170 drones and 30 cruise missiles were fired. None of them entered Israeli airspace. The reason behind that are Israeli air defenses and uh, a coalition of countries, including the United States, the United Kingdom, France and Jordan, uh, helping Israel and uh, by intercepting some of those rockets uh, coming in to the country. But it was a very long, very tense, sleepless night across the country, despite this being a, uh, an enormous attack by Iran across Israel. No fatalities have yet been reported. We know that a 10-year-old girl was injured and that a medical center in Beersheva and this in the south of Israel reported 12 people coming in injured. We also know there has been some damage to a military base, an Israeli military base in the south of the country as well. But certainly uh, from the Israeli perspective, the Israeli defense forces saying that their defenses held up and that has been a very significant success as they see it. Has there been any reaction to what we're seeing now? Uh, there has been, I understand, uh, an address uh, on, uh, I think it was uh, Israeli television, if you could bring us up to speed about what took place there. Well, certainly we've heard from Daniel Hagari, who's the spokesperson from the Israeli Defense Forces, uh, saying that there was a successful operation by the Israelis to defend uh, their territory, to stop these cruise missiles coming in, giving an update, giving that figure of 99% of those uh, intercepted, but also saying that no decisions have yet been made when it comes to a potential Israeli response to this attack. And that is now... Uh, the big question, not just hanging over Israel, but really hanging over the entire Middle East, because the uh, thing that the international community wants to avoid at all costs is a direct war between Israel and Iran. Two nuclear capable countries going to war could have utterly devastating effects for the stability of the Middle East and for peace across the world. We have heard the United States saying that it will not support Israel retaliating against Iran after this strike because they see Israel's robust defense and its cooperation with its allies in defending Israel as a win in and of itself. Joe Biden, uh, according to Axios, saying that uh, uh, Joe Biden said to Prime Minister Netanyahu, you have the win, take the win. Clearly a show of force in defense from the Israelis, but there will be a lot of pressure diplomatically from the United States, from others to avoid an escalation. We've heard that from the European Union, from the US, from India, from China urging de-escalation. A few things will happen today to look out for. The Israeli War Cabinet and Security Cabinet will be meeting in uh, just under four hours time. They will come to a decision on what Israel's response could be. There will be a meeting of the Security Council of the United Nations as well to have a diplomatic response to this uh, historic and unprecedented attack by Iran on Israeli soil. Yeah, uh, just going through some of the reports, I'm seeing that the U.S. Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, also commenting on that, saying the U.S. forces had basically intercepted dozens of missiles and, uh, what is it, unmanned aerial vehicles en route uh, uh, to Israel. What do we know about the situation on the ground currently from what we heard from Reuters journalists as well? Was that sirens and loud blasts had also been, been heard? Are you able to paint a picture for us of um, you know, what the situation has been on the ground since, especially for uh, the ordinary people? Yeah, well, I can give you a very clear picture of what it's been like overnight. It has been a tense and sleepless night across the country. Uh, uh, sirens ringing out, not here in Tel Aviv, but actually south of here, as well as near Jerusalem. They saw explosions 
in the sky above uh, Jerusalem, one of the holiest sites in the world uh, for uh, Jewish people, Muslims and Christians. Uh, those interceptions, those rockets and missiles being intercepted above the city of Jerusalem. People uh, living near the border with Lebanon in the north, living near Israel's borders and living in the south, were told by the government, you have to stay close to your bomb shelters because we cannot immediately guarantee your safety. Every person in Israel is aware at any moment during these situations where their closest bomb shelter is and they know they only have a few minutes to get to them if the worst were to happen. So it has been a sleepless night, a tense night. Now we know that things have calmed down. The Israeli airspace has been reopened, as has the airspace over Lebanon and Jordan. Those were all closed for several hours whilst this attack was going on. Now the Iranians have said, the Iranian mission to the United Nations, saying that the attack has now been concluded unless there is a response from Israel, in which case they say the following attack will be even more severe. Now the Israelis not taking any chances, certainly not taking the Iranians at their word, still bracing for what could continue but at the moment, at least for now, uh, things seem to have calmed down. Well, Alex, just uh, before I let you go, I know that, uh, you know, Israel said there'd been very little damage and uh, uh, basically warned people to remain alert. And you did say this is the first direct clash between uh, these two, if I can, enemies. Uh, what can we anticipate the UN to say uh, regarding this first direct such clash? And uh, what kind of response uh, should the world be expecting from the UN? Well, that's actually the, the big question looming over uh, the day. We will have to wait and see exactly what they say, but you can probably expect very strong condemnation of Iran and calls for de-escalation. We know uh, that the uh, top generals killed in that airstrike in Damascus, which then prompted this retaliation from Iran, those generals were involved in supporting uh, proxies that were firing rockets into northern Israel. So there has been a shadow war between these two countries for a long time with Iran supporting groups like Hezbollah and funneling weapons into the West Bank. So clearly this has been a very complicated and simmering situation. But it is clear that there will be condemnation of Iran. There will be very strong calls for de-escalation. We'll hear from the Security Council in a few hours' time to see what the United Nations position will be. But there is a real fear. And an interesting detail is that in those interceptions, the Jordanian Air Force, a country that 50 years ago was at war with Israel, that Jordanian Air Force helped intercept some of these Iranian missiles. That gives you a sense of what's at stake for the region. There is a real risk of this war uh, exploding, and that is what I expect the international community will want to avoid today. Alex Khadia, thank you very much. Live to us from Tel Aviv on, of course, uh, Iran's attack on Israel there. Uh, we're expecting a lot to come out of that. Uh